latching onto that glove. Just putting venom all over it. Wow. Oh man, that is super creepy because I can totally feel the pressure. Hey guys, it is day four here in the Peruvian Amazon. We're about to head out on a quick hike. I just really quickly wanted to get on here and show you guys this little cutie. This is a variable clown tree frog, a really small species. Uh, Cole actually found him in the bathroom. So yesterday we had downpour. It's the first time it rained since we've been here. So it brought out a lot of the animals. We actually found a Bushmaster yesterday uh, and some of the really cool frog species are starting to come out. So as you can tell by the name, they are variable in color. Some of them are yellow like this. Some of them have splotches. Some of them are a little bit red, uh, orange. Really, really cute guy. He has bright orange, pink toes. Not pink toes, bright orange toes. Um, and yeah, he was in the bathroom. So we're going to put him over here in the shade so he doesn't dry out. Really, really cute frog. Here you go. What do you think? He's so cute. <laughs> there you go. Now he doesn't want to leave me. There he is. We're Chris and Gabby. We're just your average couple with a passion for wildlife. Okay, or not so average. We're professional animal handlers living in South Florida. We work with dangerous animals on a daily basis. Nothing is off limits, and we never know what kind of crazy animal we're going to run into next. Join us as we explore, adventure, and travel to new and amazing places. Welcome to our wild world. Just latching on. So what kind of coral snake is this? This is a lemniscatus, Microus lemniscatus, and uh, a ribbon coral. Oh. So this one was brought to us by one of the locals that found it. I would love to know how we got that thing in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can check them out. Um, he's getting... So they're, they're super whippy though, so it makes them really dangerous yeah, too. Yeah, very whippy. Yeah. yeah. It's just venom all over this glove. So I did bring a welding glove. That way I can uh, at least try to handle these things because of how they act. They're small and they're very, very whippy. And you can't get through this glove, you know, so no worries there. But that's why I specifically brought this glove to deal with these small coral snake species. Now, check out the colors and the bands. It's really important to see this. Red touches black. So usually there's a saying when it comes to uh, coral snakes, red touches black, friend of Jack. Yeah, that only works in North America. <laughs> that does not work, work in uh, South America. Statistically, the whole red touch yellow, kill a fellow, red touch black, friend of Jack is not really applicable anywhere because you do have aberrancies in pattern. That is true. So cool. even though in the U.S. it does work most of the time, uh, it's not the kind of thing you want to bet your life on. So the thing we always say is the best bet is to just learn to properly identify the animals in the area that you're going to be in and not trust your life on a children's nursery run. That's uh, usually not a good idea. Now, what do you think about the people that freehandle these coral snakes? So that's that's one that we get a lot. We um, see that a lot. People think that coral snakes are naturally very, very calm. As you just saw with this thing, he was just lashed onto the glove. And uh, you can see the venom all over the glove over there. So, uh, yeah, that is not the case, definitely. And uh, they are very, very bitey, especially these South American ones. But even Eastern corals in the U.S. can be very, very bitey. I've caught a ton of them. Some of them are extremely calm. Some of them you can just literally pick up. But some of them are also very, very bitey. And again, not the kind of thing you want to throw your life on. So this is, um, the coral snake is an elapid species. And so that means they are the cousin of the sea snake and the crate and the cobra. Oh, okay. And so they have a very powerful neurotoxic venom. So... If this guy were to actually envenomate, uh, you can start to go into paralysis and then eventually die because of paralysis, lack of breathing, respiratory failure. See, some of the coral snake species out here are really specific on what they eat. Generally speaking, coral snakes like to eat other snakes a lot of the time. They'll eat uh, lizards, anything they can find like that. And um, some of them, uh, like the orange ring coral, also feeds primarily on velvet worms, which is really weird and fascinating. <laughs> But you can see how looking. whippy he is. Yeah. Now, another thing that's interesting, if I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press down on his midsection body, I'm going to let go of the tail. And, oh, there he goes. Latching on. Look at that thing. Just chewing away right into my finger. Now, if I let go of the tail, though, he's going to lift his tail up and coil it so it looks like a head on the end right there, too. Wow. And so they'll do that to try to distract the predator away from the head. So see right now? 
he's moving his tail just like how he moves his head and it makes it really, really confusing if you're a predator trying to kill this thing. And as somebody trying to catch these things, I have run into them before on the trail, didn't have a glove or anything with me, and uh, I actually lost one because he was just whipping through the leaf litter in the dark on, you know, using my headlamp trying to get them, and they're just, it just wasn't happening, you know, so I had to let them go, it just wasn't safe enough to do it. And look at that venom yeah. right there, you can see that. Oh, yeah. And then up on my, my thumb area yeah. too. Just venom all over the place. Yeah, they can get bigger than this. This isn't a huge species like the aquatic coral snakes. I was shocked to see how big the aquatic coral snakes are. Yeah, there's he another was one. He like, what, four feet? Uh, three no, feet? The, the one, yeah, that one was probably that. But, I mean, three they can get, like, six. six feet. Oh, really? Yeah, and then there's another species, the Putamiensis, and they also get really big, too. Wow. Now, uh, something else about coral snakes that is interesting is the fact that they don't strike like other snakes do. You see how he does this weird head movement? So, like, if I have my hand out here in front of him, he's not gonna strike like how a viper does. He doesn't rear back and strike forward. What they do is this kind of sideways movement, and that's what they're really good at, if he's gonna do it. So like if you touch there, he does that whippy thing. And then just latches really on again. Wants you. Yeah, it's, this is not a joke, okay? <laughs> you definitely do not want that attached to you. Um, these guys are mainly nocturnal. Uh, you usually find them at night, you can find them early in the morning, or if it's really dark out, like if it's cloudy and then underneath the canopy it's also dark because of that, that's how it can be, um, they might be active at that time too, but they're definitely not out in the sunlight. How often do they eat if they eat an average sized meal for themselves? Well, just like any, any ectothermic reptile, if they eat a large prey item, they're not going to have to eat very often. Mm -hmm. So I would assume this thing's probably out there eating like, you know, every couple of days, once a week kind of thing, depending on the prey availability and what he can get a hold of. And they bask as well? Uh, no. No, you won't find these guys out basking. A lot of the uh, nocturnal species don't bask at all. So another common myth with coral snakes is people think that they are uh, rear fanged. They are not rear fanged at all, actually, but they do have small fangs in the front. They have small fixed fangs in the front. He's just not letting go at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. look at that. <laughs> he is not letting go. <laughs> But yeah, they do have small fixed fangs in the front, and they will chew to move their venom in, but they don't have to chew to envenomate. So this works for a coral, but wouldn't work for a gaboon. Yeah, no, no, no. Two-inch no. fangs, no, yeah. It's a, it's a welding glove. Um, I do not recommend doing this on your own. I definitely don't recommend using this as like, oh, now I'm safe. No. Because if you grab here and he whips up, he can get your forearm. Uh, you know, I, I've been handling venomous snakes my entire life. I used to do venomous snake shows for a living, so I'm very calm and comfortable doing this. I do not recommend other people ever try to do this at all, okay? Uh, the glove, using any tool, honestly, will give people a false sense of security if you're an amateur at it. So a lot of people have the glove and they think, oh, now I'm safe, and they just want to go ahead and grab it without understanding. He can totally reach up and get your arm up there. And so, um... That's why it is dangerous, especially for someone who doesn't know a lot about snake handling, to try to use a glove like this, because it does give you that false sense of security. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and release this guy, and uh, as he slithers off on his own, they're going to try to get some shots of him. Alright, so you guys want to come over here and be ready? Everybody ready? Oh, he's being good. And that jutting thing. Completely gone into the leaf litter. You wouldn't even know there was a snake there walking by. watching this week's video and we hope that you join us next year on our Peruvian Amazon trip. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment down below. That's all for now and we'll see you guys next week.